Okay, so one of the most frequent issues that we run into when we're dealing with any kind of converting from an outside system is the issue of having a customer that has multiple ship to addresses or multiple addresses. So with the QuickBooks API, uh, we cannot import into multiple ship to addresses nor any of the ways that we looked at today, right? There was only one ship to address per customer. Okay, so of course you don't want to like throw your hands up and say, oh, QuickBooks won't work then. No, we want to think about the way that QuickBooks will work for a customer. How can we set it up in a way that will work? And that's using jobs. I usually explain to customers as well because in their outside system, sometimes the ship to address will be considered a location as an example, and they can run things like profit and loss by location, receivables by location, etc. QuickBooks does it as a job. That's that's what it is to be a job in QuickBooks, right? You can run P&Ls, you can run um, sales by, you can run you know different reports by job. So we want to make sure that we get it set up that way. All right, so here we have some sample data, and you can see right away, right, the customer, four-lane racing, four-lane racing, four-lane racing, down the side here, and we have multiple addresses that we're dealing with. Now, also looking in this data, it's pretty simple, right? We just have the customer name, the address, address one, and address two. So we have to decide that the jobs right? The customer name is going to be four lane racing. We've got that. That's going to be the header customer. Then we have to figure out what we're going to use as the job. So in the example that we talked about in, you know, the last scenario we talked about, uh, we had a customer account number in there. Sometimes you can use that customer account number to make the jobs unique because usually each job has its own account number. Uh, occasionally we've seen people have store numbers. So as an example, I have a customer who sells uh, food to Costco, and so each Costco has its own store number, and so we use that store number to be the job, right? That would be the job name. That was an example of something we've done before. With this data that you can see here, we have neither of those. Um, so what we want to do is figure out another way to, you know, kind of give this job a name. So in this example, we're going to talk about calling it you know, four lane racing of the city. Okay, so I know, our customer knows, there's no two four lane racings in the same city. So city would be a good thing to, you know, concatenate onto the name so that we know, um, or we can have a unique name for each job, okay? Now, of course, the city doesn't work. So let's say they do happen to have, you know, two workstation industries in the same city, I have seen people use the street address. I mean, it's just kind of long. That's why, you know, we're trying to find a way to um, add some additional information onto the customer name to make it unique, but, you know, having to make it 4800 West Charleston Boulevard, that's kind of long. <laughs> so we're trying to find a way to, to make it simple. So in this example, we're going to talk about, again, how to do the city. So first thing that we always want to do, right, we want to take, take a copy of the original. We never want to just uh, work on the original document there. And I'm going to call this one import. Now I want to get the city into its own column, but I, I also want to leave these details here, right, because I still need the city state zip to paste in uh, my city state zip in, you know, build to line three or whatever we're going to do. So from here, what I want to do, because I want to get the city in its own column, but still leave this, I'm actually going to copy this entire column and paste it. So we have a second one of these. And then I'm going to go in and do my text to columns, OK? So I'm going to say text to columns. I noticed that there's a comma right after the city, every single one. I'm looking down here, comma after every city. So I'm going to say it's delimited with. And I'm going to choose comma and then finish. So now it's stuck all the, you know, state and zip into an additional cell here. And I want to scroll down and make sure it's all correct, looking correct, and it is. Now I don't care about the state and zip, so I'm actually going to go ahead and delete that. And then I'll just retitle this to say city. Now again, we're also going to go in here and clean up, right, because LaGrange is lowercase bottom like we've seen before. So I'm going to insert in and do that proper 
uh, function that we talked about in the previous uh, scenarios. So proper equals proper, open parentheses, E2, close parentheses. Now Reno, it's not a big deal, but when I copy it down, you'll see now Bonham, Lagrange, it's uppercase so that it looks a lot cleaner. So then I want to copy this and I'm going to paste special and paste the values in and then get rid of that column. Now in here I'm also going to add an additional column so that I can concatenate. So you can just make it that the job name is called Reno and then it falls under four lane racing, right? Because if I'm looking at it on reports or anything like that, it's going to be four lane racing colon Reno. So I kind of know that Reno is a sub of four lane racing. However, uh, most of our customers don't do it that way. They usually do four lane racing dash Reno as an option. So we're going to want to use that concatenate. So in here, uh, I want to go ahead and use the function concatenate. And I want it to be four lane racing. And then I'm going to just put a dash between the two, right? No space even. And then the city. Okay. And once I have that, I can copy it down. So this is going to be uh, copy the column, paste special values, and then this is going to be the job name. Okay. Now when we go ahead into QuickBooks, I'm going to do paste from Excel. And switch it over to unsaved customers, of course, because we want to use the unsaved customers here. So the job name, right, so the company name or the name here, right, this is the, um, this is the name of the, the job. And then we say that it's a job of the customer. So first I'm going to paste in here, or I'm sorry, I'm going to paste in here the customer. Okay. Now notice right away, I don't have these customers set up yet, right? I don't have the header customer set up yet, so it's going to tell me. I can go ahead and do quick add. All right, and some of these other ones, these guys are set up. Okay, whoops. The Woodstock Center is not set up down here. Why isn't it letting me? You can see sometimes this is a little finicky. <laughs> so I go, if I push the down arrow, right? So if you get some of these where it keeps on popping back up, push the down arrow, you can say quick add down here. And again, keep going down. And I can just hit enter since quick add is there. Quick add. Okay. So now I have all of the customers created. So the header customers. Now, of course, I could have just gone in and pasted the customers as well, you know, up front. So I could have done that too. But now we're going to copy the job. Okay. So we're saying the name for Lane Racing is a job. For Lane Racing Reno is a job of For Lane Racing. And then, of course, we could copy in what we want for the build to address line one. So if you wanted the job name in there with the dash Reno, or you could just call it four lane racing as an example. So build to line one. And then we want to paste in build to line two. And build to line three, which is the city state zip. Okay, and then we can go ahead and say save changes. All right, now when we go look at four lane racing, right? So I have four lane racing, Delray Beach, Las Vegas, Reno, San Jose. So all of them are set up as jobs with their correct ship to addresses. And now when I create a customer or an invoice for this customer, you know, I just want to make sure that I choose the right and appropriate job.